Getting the right kind of people is almost as important as getting the parts. You, you have to look for persons who, who are able to anticipate what they have to do to create things which are not yet even thought about. But today the pressure is not every part is coming on time. So we always have to recover delays in, in the parts assembly. Delays or no delays, there are just over three weeks until T's must ship the first set of fuselage sections off to the final assembly line in France. Everyone at Airbus is feeling the pressure, especially those at the top. With a project lasting years, each must find their own way to deal with the inevitable stress. This is a marathon endeavor. An overall boss, Charles Champion, clears his head by running whenever he can. It's a question of time management, because uh, not only time management within, at, at, at work, but also uh, time management with your personal life. And you can burn out. Huh? Basically, yeah, if you're not careful, you just can burn out, and uh, at the end of the day, uh, you're, you're, you're out. Can we start? The pressure comes to a peak every two weeks when the heads of each department gather from all over Europe to report on their progress. It's a tough environment that has seen sackings and resignations. Andreas Fering has recently been brought in to replace the previous head of interior engineering. It's particularly tough because he's inherited a department that's three months behind schedule and over budget. team and myself we are under enormous pressure because we have to keep the timeline and we are late we have to keep the budget line and uh, we have a major difficulty to do so for Andreas and his team the size of the A380 project is already taking its toll the people are exhausted already and uh, sometimes they are a little bit uh, let's say overstress and the reaction is overstressed as well because um, if you then have a, a very very quick requirement coming in you have to do this you have to, to speed up and so on they do not understand because they are working like hell already this discreet unmarked warehouse is where the brand new cabin will be born Here, in private, is where Airbus and the airlines can agree exactly how the inside will look. Now let's enter inside what we are doing over here. Having the impression the like workload is massive. Each airline wants a customized interior, so Andreas has to engineer dozens of unique features to keep them all happy. When you have discussing with the customers, you don't show him a mock-up of the wing or a mock-up of the, of the vertical stabilizer or something like this. You show to him a mock-up of the cabin, giving him the impression how it could look like for his customers, the area where he is earning the money. You can change the lighting area over here. You can have green light, you can have blue light. Andreas has the difficult task of turning the airline's high expectations of showers and the like into reality. We will have showers on our aircraft, but not in a way like they are displayed at the moment in Toulouse. Because these are sorts of designers, not of engineers uh, building the stuff. With flights lasting up to 18 hours, a crew rest area will be vital. This block holds no less than 12 bunks for the cabin attendants. Shall I demonstrate how much space uh, we have inside this? Oh my goodness, how to enter inside. This is a good technician, always trying on his own if he can satisfy his customer. The oversized luggage bins are causing a major headache. Manually operated. The loading limitation of these bins are 50 kilos or 60 kilos. So you can imagine that if you have a stewardess or a passenger trying to move 50 kilo like this, is not, they are not that strong uh, 
and it is a, a difficulty. Nearby is Ebus's top secret research facility, where technicians strive to find solutions to these problems. They've come up with a prototype electric bin, but nothing is ever straightforward. For closing, you push again, and the thing is closing. It's a very simple item, but uh, if you go now to the rear of this uh, feature, you can see uh, that the device which is used over here uh, with all these uh, specific belts and mechanical devices or electromechanical devices is something which will be very difficult to integrate. Hundreds of such items still need to be finalized. What is really needed is time, 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 time. With the first set of wings nearing completion in Britain and the fuselage parts almost ready to leave Germany, time is the one thing Andreas Fering does not have. The design of the new Airbus A380 goes back a long way. Philippe Jarry was one of the elite team involved from the very beginning. I think it was in 88 where there were the first meetings, very secret meetings, between very few people in Airbus who said, well, if we had to imagine a very big airplane, let's say 500 or 600 seats, how would it look? At the time, their biggest machine was the A340, a state-of-the-art but only mid-sized airliner. Keen to cut costs, the team tried ways to double its capacity relatively cheaply. The first idea was to use existing components, uh, which has been an Airbus tradition. And so the people started, for example, assembling two A340 fuselages side by side and make it a kind of horizontal fuselage cross-section. Put big wings, of course, and maybe a kind of V-tail, and that was really the first sketch. Dubbed the ultra-high capacity aircraft, this weird-looking machine was scrapped because it would take too long to evacuate in an emergency. The main problem that uh, the people were facing was a very, very large number of seats installed abreast and you had to provide four or five aisles in the middle wasting in fact a lot of time while it was difficult to accommodate enough doors on each side to ensure for the evacuation the next big idea combined the A340 with its little brother the A320 giving a humpback shape similar to the Boeing 747 but even if it ran full length such a narrow top deck would not have the space that was needed. If you pretend to offer to the uh, airline, the major airline of the world, a top class, top efficient airplane, you cannot compromise. As simple as this. So he, it has to be a fully new design. Soon there were hundreds, then thousands of engineers, technicians, computer specialists and aerodynamics experts working flat out on the A3XX, as it was then called. The new machine would be enormous, with two full-width decks, giving 49% more floor space than the jumbo. The airlines told us, don't be shy, don't hesitate. Of course it has to be big. It has to be bigger than anything that is flying. So don't be shy, don't hesitate. Make it really big. But there was one more factor the team had to contend with. A monster that has long cast its shadow over the entire operation. This is the Beluga. The extraordinary, some would say freakish, cargo plane custom built by Airbus. There are planes that can carry more weight but the Beluga has everything else in the world beaten when it comes to volume. This machine can swallow a load 16 feet wide by 16 feet tall by 70 feet long in one go.